Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is a continuation of the series Everything You Need to Know About Punctuation. And we're gonna learn eight different ways that we can use the beloved comma. Much like its distant cousins the semicolon and colon, the comma is very commonly misused. And as we learned in the previous video, incorrectly using the comma can mean the difference between life and death. So if you want to master your punctuation skills, then keep watching. The first rule you need to remember is fairly basic. We use commas to separate words and word groups in a simple series of three or more items. For example, I could say that this morning I had an egg, a bagel, an avocado, and a cup of coffee for breakfast. However, when the last comma in a series of items comes before AND or OR, this is known as the Oxford comma or a serial comma. The purpose of the Oxford comma is to let the reader know that the items separated by the comma are completely separate items. For example, I went out for dinner with my flatmates Sarah and Adam. Now I want you to pause this video for a second and let me know what you think the sentence means. Are Sarah and Adam my flatmates? If you answered yes, you're Ron. Well, not actually Ron Ron. You're Ron if you're writing an article for the Oxford University Press. In any case, the Oxford comma indicates that these are all different people. But had I said I went out for dinner with my flatmates Sarah and Adam, that would mean that Sarah and Adam are actually my flatmates. Not all authors use the Oxford comma, or only use it to avoid any ambiguity. Like if you were to write, we had wine, cheese and crackers and grapes, and you want to denote that cheese and crackers were one item. Personally, if it were me, I'd probably add a comma before and to clarify that the cheese and crackers were one single dish. Ultimately, there's no real right or wrong answer. What's important is consistency. If you choose to use the Oxford comma in a paper, use it throughout the entire paper. The next rule relates to the use of commas with adjectives. And speaking of which, in case you already haven't, check out my video about the order of adjectives in English, where I go into detail about the different rules relating to the correct order of adjectives. In short, we only use commas when using coordinate adjectives. These are adjectives that are of equal rank and modify the noun individually. For example, I could say I had a delicious, sweet and flavorsome dessert. Think of it this way. If the order of adjectives is interchangeable, that is, it doesn't matter if we say sweet, delicious, and flavorsome dessert, or a flavorsome, sweet, and delicious dessert, then we use the comma to separate the adjectives. Rule number three, we use a comma after a dependent clause that starts a sentence. Which begs the question, what's a dependent clause? Well, a dependent clause is a group of words that contains a subject and verb, but doesn't express a complete thought. Put differently, a dependent clause cannot be a standalone sentence. As an example, if I say something like, unless you tell me what the book is about, is not a complete sentence. It sounds as if I either have to add another clause before or after the sentence for it to make sense. Here's a great tip for you. When deciding whether or not a clause is dependent, look out for subordinating conjunctions like unless, although, since, until, or when. I've actually included a list of subordinating conjunctions for you guys in the description box below, so make sure to check them out. So let's take a look at a few examples. While the children were playing outside, their mother was making dinner. Before we go any further, remember to like this video and subscribe for more English lessons. Similarly, we also use a comma after an introductory clause. 
This simply means that we need to add a comma after an introductory phrase because it will tell the reader that the main part of the sentence is about to begin. It's a clause that sets the scene and provides background information about the following phrase. For example, if you want to put on muscle mass, you must eat at a surplus. So here the phrase you must eat at a surplus is the independent clause and if you want to put on muscle is the dependent clause that introduces the independent clause. Turning to rule number five, we use commas to frame non-restrictive elements and offset a positives from the rest of the sentence. Put simply, you can think of a positives as non-essential information in a sentence. It's the fluff that you don't really need to add. So if the absence of a phrase within a sentence doesn't really materially change its meaning, then it's an appositive. Let's take a look at a few examples for it to just kind of make sense. I can write, Alexander the Great, a member of the Argyad dynasty, was a king of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedon. Here the phrase a member of the Argyad dynasty isn't at all important, and the sentence would still make sense even if we didn't include this information. By contrast, imagine that you and I are best friends and we're chatting and then I suddenly say, my cousin Maria is getting married next month. In this context, the name Maria is an essential element because if we're friends, you'll probably know my cousins and so you'd wanna know the identity of the cousin that's getting married. So for the purposes of this sentence in this context, the name of my cousin is important. Moving on, we also add a comma between two independent clauses if they're joined by connectors. Connectors are words like and, but, or, so, for, and so on. For example, did you order out or did you cook dinner at home? In another example, Helen walked into the living room and then she decided to lie down on the sofa. Another way to use a comma is to indicate direct address. This is when a speaker in a sentence names the person to whom they are speaking. Depending on how the sentence is structured, we place the comma either before or after the person's name. So we could write, you're nothing but a big disappointment, Darren, or Darren, you're nothing but a big disappointment. And let's not forget that we also use commas to refer to direct quotations. This is a situation where you want to quote a dialogue between two or more people. You'll often see this in novels or news articles where people's speech is reported. By way of example, I could write, Dasha said I had bacon and eggs for breakfast. Remember that we can also switch the sentence around and say, I had bacon and eggs for breakfast, said Dasha. So now that you're proficient in using the comma, you can go ahead and practice your knowledge by dropping a few sentences in the comment section of this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to never miss an English lesson.